Hey kids, welcome to Rob's Red Hotspot and a new Let's Play. Uh, this time we're going to be playing uh, SimCity 4. SimCity 4 is, in my opinion, the most realistic, uh, most realistic city simulator you can be playing. Even in 2020, it's probably almost uh, 20 years old, maybe 15 years old. Uh, but it's got a great modding community. And if you mod it correctly, you can build the biggest cities pretty much of any simu city simulator now. Uh, even even um, that includes like City Skylines and Cities XL and those other simulators, which are very interesting games in their own right, very fun games to play uh, for various reasons. But uh, SimCity 4 still takes the cake for the simulator that allows you to build the biggest cities and in my opinion the city that models real life uh, urban developments in the most realistic way. So I've been playing it pretty much ever since it came out. Uh, I've gotten pretty good over the years and I want to just kind of show you guys the ropes and kind of slowly build a city over a few episodes. Uh, and uh, sort of sprawl out into a region gradually uh, and yeah so I've what I've done here is I've downloaded a region um, from one of the SimCity forums and if you're gonna if you want to dive into this game it's a really easy game to get into because it it only costs like it's gonna cost you like less than ten dollars on Steam it's a very old game obviously uh, you, you'll certainly want to get the complete edition of it don't uh, don't 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 get the version that doesn't have Rush Hour, which was the only expansion pack they made for it. And there are a couple mods that I think are really necessary to run this game properly. I don't want to get into mods too heavily right now, but I'll certainly talk about it kind of as I go through the playthrough. There's a few things, and I'll put I'll post links in the description. But there's a few there's a few things that I think are really essential. Uh, if you don't get those those mods, then I, I actually don't think this game is worth playing. But once you've got them. Uh, you can you can play this to your heart's content. You can add all sorts of great content. The, there are people making all sorts of great stuff, buildings, uh, mods that change gameplay, rebalance things, fix glitches, make the game look prettier, all manner of things. So I'm going to dive in. So we've got this region, Plantation Bay, and this region also highlights one of the best things about uh, SimCity 4, which is that you can take like a satellite photograph from the US, what is it called, the US Geological Survey or any of these public databases where you can get like a satellite photograph of real world terrain and you can scan it. I don't know how to do this to be perfectly honest, but there are a lot of people that do it and there are just hundreds of these maps out there. But what they can do is they can take the software and they can take like a raster image from a satellite image and scan it in such a way that SimCity 4 can read it and turn it into a playable map, uh, which is which is really cool. Uh, so you'll you'll find all sorts of maps. There's no point. You can also like craft your own terrain in this game and make a map, but it's it's very clumsy. So my recommendation, if you want to dive into this game, is to just get a custom region that someone's made and uh, that based on based on usually a real life city or region uh, and and just just dive in with that uh, because you'll get these like really realistic kind of rolling hills and valleys and rivers and this coastline you got kind of these flat areas along the coast and it just it it'll just make things a lot more a lot more realistic um, and also give you some interesting obstacles in terms of geography that you're, you'll have to contend with. So what I like about this region is we've got uh, a mix of these big tiles and small tiles. We've also got this this huge bay. I guess it's, it's called Plantation Bay for that reason. We've got this huge kind of inlet bay with rivers coming into it. We've got this this sort of long, it almost looks like you could do a kind of Miami Miami Beach style city along this if you wanted uh, this kind of, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, almost a peninsula, as well as this one here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and and you've got hills. You've got you've really got like a really varied geography. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up this city, which I think is a good candidate for being maybe the center of an urban region. 
for a number of reasons, which we'll see. But I'm going to dive right in. And I think we're just going to call this this city maybe Plantation Bay Central or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with a name. Uh, I might use, as I expand this region, I might start using, uh, there's a few things you can find online, uh, city, city name generators. I find that I usually, especially when I'm building very big regions in this game, I, uh, my creativity kind of hits a plateau and I find myself using those name generators to to uh, to just kind of give me some ideas. Uh, so the first thing you should do when you dive into a city uh, is any 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 kind of terraforming you want to do. This is the God mode view. Before we actually found the city, we're in God mode, and so it doesn't cost us any money to do this. I'm not going to change the terrain because, as I said, this is a really brilliant. Uh, this probably I, I, I'm almost positive this map comes from a satellite image that's been that's been transferred into the game. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put trees everywhere uh, because I don't want to have to like pay to plant trees. Also, I think it's kind of more realistic. I'm kind of imagining this city being settled sort of from nothing. And so covering the entire landscape with trees means that uh, not only will there be trees, which which you know the your 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 residents will enjoy to some degree living near trees, but also uh, you're going to have to clear those trees. It's going to cost a bit more to actually develop this this area because they're going to have to clear the trees, and we're going to want to clear the trees kind of selectively. We don't want to clear the uh, the entire area. Uh, we want to we want to kind of maybe maybe make some parks that that make use of those those natural growth trees so that we don't have to spend a bunch of money planting them. So I'm really just going to make this dense forest that covers the whole area, almost as though we were on the on the frontier or something. Uh, and then now we can uh, once we've done that, there's all sorts of other options here. I mean, you can you, you see these are these kind of fairly clumsy manual terrain editing options that I'm not going to play with right now. At some point, maybe I'll open a, a region that doesn't have a map on it that's just like a plain flat region and I'll play around with these to to give you a sense of what they do but uh, yeah for the time being I'm not going to uh, you can also like these ones are you know you can you can this this kind of paints over the entire map raises the terrain lowers it and all that uh, and you can kind of set loose a volcano uh, or a, a meteor or a robot attack or all sorts of things. Anyway, we'll, we'll have to, we'll, we'll we'll get into all this and play with it later. Uh, we can also make it night. Uh, we can we can set it so that it goes back and forth between night and day. I'll keep it in day mode while we play because it's very it's kind of hard to build a city at night. To be honest, uh, we might turn night mode on every once in a while just to see how it looks to see the the night lights. Because because they're uh, it's kind of cool to see your city at night, especially once it gets big and it's got all sorts of skyscrapers and bright bright, bright lights. So let's just call this one Plantation Bay. I can also change the name of the city later uh, if we decide that that uh, this is not uh, this is not creative enough or what have you, or maybe it doesn't suit suit the city. Um, but yeah, let's gonna go. I'm gonna put on hard mode just for fun. Uh, these difficulty settings uh, don't don't really do anything. They mostly just give you more money and they also affect the reward structure and uh, some of the demands for f some of the demand mechanics and stuff like that. But uh, you, if sometimes you want to build a very big city very quickly, uh, don't feel like you're cheating by going on easy mode. Easy mode actually has its own challenges. Uh, and you know the city grows very quickly and the city can also get problems very quickly so these don't really matter I just play on hard modes because I want us to start with a small lump of cash and I want us to try and really make the best use of that possible but if you want to build a big city right away just click easy and go for it You're, it's not uh, it, it's not really a proper difficulty level uh, let's say okay well I guess the mayor will be Rob because this is Rob's red hot spot. So there we go, established city. And we get some fireworks. Brilliant. So let's zoom in a bit here. Uh, well, maybe first we'll just take a look at the landscape and decide where we think we should build our settlements. All this land is pretty flat. This land is pretty flat. There's really no obstacles to or barriers to construction. Uh, the, the challenge that we're going to have on this map is, of course, that we have these 
this kind of river delta here, as well as the this is the this is the bay. So if we if we want to build a city that has areas here and here and here and here, we're gonna have to have bridges or ferries or something. So I think we're gonna focus on one landmass first, so that we don't have the expense of maintaining these these large bridges. And I think we'll pick this one because it's the largest. Uh, so I like to kind of build cities with a historical urban development mindset. Uh, I actually, I studied urban studies in my undergrad and did a little master's work in that. So it's been a long-term passion of mine, kind of urban history, urban development, stuff like that. I uh, didn't end up going that route for, in terms of career, but, but it's, I've been into that for a long time. And so I think as I'm building this city, I'll probably talk about a little bit of urban history development. Uh, this game, SimCity 4, I would say is primarily a North American inspired city builder. It Obviously it's an American game. Uh, you can certainly build cities that are close to a European style city or maybe even an Asian city, especially if you mod the game. But I would say that the way that the development works in this game is primarily North American in a number of ways, and I'll get into that. So I'm I'm kind of imagining here that maybe maybe we're we're starting a city kind of in the 19th century or so. So I'll kind of have a 19th century city building mentality at the beginning, and then as the city gets bigger, we'll move more into a 20th century kind of city with you know highways and car culture and and all of the all the wonders and problems that that brings. So let's start out. So when we start a city, there's a few things that we absolutely need. We need a power plant. We need a power plant and we have a number of options. Uh, some of these, some of the things you'll see in here do come from mods. Uh, I will talk about them later. Some of them I don't use as well. So there's these, these menus here are kind of a, a bit polluted actually with tons and tons and tons and tons of, of tool tips that come from the many many mods I have installed in this game but I'm not going to go into too much into details and I'm for the first few vid videos at least I'm gonna focus mostly on stuff that you can access in a vanilla or almost vanilla version of the game so let's start by building our power plant uh, I would advise almost anyone to start with the coal power plant. It's dirty, it's filthy, it's it's not nice. But if you're playing the game, unless you're going to use cheats and you're going to give yourself free money, and you're kind of more of a city designer and you're not you're not actually trying to challenge yourself with building the city, which is totally fine too. This is a great game for just building beautiful cities uh, if that's what you're into. Uh, but if you're not, if you're actually trying if you're actually trying to challenge yourself, uh, this is the most cost-effective power plant. Uh, it's the coal power plant, and it's, it's going to bring us all sorts of problems down the line. Uh, but it's cheap to build. See, if I if I go down to the oil power plant, it's almost double uh, up front, and then the monthly cost—that's the most important thing. The monthly cost is 600 versus 250. And if you look at how much power it generates, this one generates almost as much as this one, and it costs less than half per month. So that's an easy choice. So I'm going to plop one of those down. Uh, we also we want to build because this is such a dirty power plant. We want to we want to build it in a kind of secluded location. Um, ideally, I would even like stick it on this island here, and that's something maybe we'll think about in the future. Is maybe using one of these, or it's not an island, but using one of these land masses as kind of a dump. Uh, so that there's a river that protects the, the residents of the city. But for the time being, let's just kind of stick it in, uh, off in a corner. Uh, let's just kind of stick it off in a corner here. Uh, I gotta remember the hotkeys. I think if I... No, that's not gonna work. Okay. Uh, let's stick it there. I'm realizing now I'm gonna have to reprogram some of my hotkeys for my video recorder because I believe that some of them actually overlap with SimCity hotkeys. But I will deal with that later. So we've built this power plant. It needs a road. I'm using the street, which is the cheapest road. Uh, it's not a very efficient road, but it is cheap. Uh, I'm going to connect the power plant to the road. And now, before I start drawing roads all over the place and cutting through this beautiful forest, I am going to figure out where we're actually going to build the city. And I want to build the city, I think I want to build it near the water. 
Historically, cities often start uh, near sources of water. Uh, this area here could be a good area to maybe build a port eventually. For the time being, we're not going to do that, but let's just start by making a very simple, tight grid. Uh, most cities, I think a lot of people who play city builders tend to think of grids as a very boring kind of uh, city map, but grids are actually an, an incredibly efficient way to build cities in a number of ways. Uh, in fact, oh, that's not quite right. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, we think of grids as being kind of an American New York City type thing, but there are there are actually many European cities, like Barcelona. There's a whole 19th century section of Barcelona that is uh, this beautiful square grid grid pattern, and in the in the center of every grid, there's a park, and it and it creates this incredible walkable urban environment uh, that with a unified architecture. So, so grids, there's many different kinds of grids and they date back hundreds of years. I mean, the Romans actually built grids. So it's not the only way to build cities. It's not necessarily the best way to build cities, but it is certainly a very interesting way to build cities. So I'm going to start with, let's say, a 9x9 nine nine grid. And we're not going to be just building entirely grid-based cities. And our development's going to change as the city grows based on its needs and also based on sort of what I'm feeling like. Because uh, I think that's the thing about cities too, is that cities are not the product of a rational, thought-out plan. I mean, some parts of cities are part of a rational, thought-out plan, but, uh, but, but cities are also a series of happy accidents. So we're going to do that. Uh, the reason I've gone but with a 6x6 six six grid, which I hope I've done, it's kind of hard to count tile sometimes, is that uh, the in the interface here, the largest zone we can develop is three tiles. So by building a 6x6 six six grid, I can I can really make use of all those tiles. I'm just going to zone, this is, the green is, is residential. Uh, for those of you who haven't played SimCity before, uh, green has always been the color of residential in SimCity. I like my zones to kind of follow the roads so that if you were to drive or walk down one of these roads, you would have houses facing each other. Uh, if you if you kind of zone, if you don't pay attention to what direction the your zones are going, then you you can have these sort of weird. It doesn't. It feels somehow it feels wrong to me to have like someone's backyard facing someone's front yard. But maybe that's just me being OCD. And, and at a certain point, certain point, I'll probably I'll probably not pay too much attention to that, but I like, I like, this is one of the neat things about this game is you can make these sort of custom sized zones. Like I can also make, gotta be careful not to spend all my money here, but I can also make like a, a one tile zone and just sort of have these little individual houses with no, with no yard. Uh, and I can, you know, I can do this at higher densities and, and we could have a much, much, t we could have a tighter road grid. But yeah, let's build this. This, this I think, is going to be pretty flexible. And if we need to build longer blocks or something later, we, we can adapt it. Now, I'm not going to build any commercial, and I'm not going to build any heavy industry. I'm just going to build a bit of farming. Uh, and so for the time being, before we do that, though, let's, uh, let's just remember to, you know what? I'm actually going to use the row. Well, no, maybe I'll just use, this is a mod. Uh, can I? I got to rotate these. No, you know what? Let's not do that right now. Um, I'm just going to use a road because the, the street, the vanilla street, actually can't be built diagonally. So I'm going to use this road, which doesn't really matter. Let's just do that. That's kind of the most, the most efficient road I can build because it's, you know, I guess the shortest distance is a straight line, so to speak. And then we also need to build a power line so that the power gets from the power plants to our residential zone. Now, for low density residential zones, we do not need water. So I'm gonna just not do that. I'm gonna go with a kind of minimalist approach and only build what we actually need. What we do need though is a dump because if we don't build some kind of garbage capacity right away, uh, we are going to end up with garbage in the streets very quickly. So it's pretty much the first few things you should be thinking about when you build a city in SimCity 4 is zoning some landfill. There's other forms of uh, 
There's other forms of garbage disposal you can use, and we will use them at some point, but the cheapest at the beginning of the game is a landfill. Uh, I would avoid building a very large landfill because it takes a long time to get rid of it. Uh, it takes the, the it takes a long time for this land to be clean. It's going to create a lot of pollution and a lot of problems, and garbage is a big problem in this game, as it is in real life. I think most people who live in a big city like New York or, I don't know, Mexico City or one of those big world cities don't realize that, uh, you know, garbage gets shipped all over the world so that it doesn't end up in our streets. Um, so yeah, there we go. We've got a kind of dirty city, but, uh, and then we're, we're going to need some employment. So I think we're going to start with some farms. Uh, and I'm not gonna build... am I gonna build roads to these farms? Mm, yeah, maybe I'll build a few kind of regional type roads. So maybe we'll take... Maybe we'll take a road here. That kind of goes there. Or a street. This is called a street in-game, but really it should be some sort of rural road, right? Uh, and maybe we'll extend this guy this way. Oh, I see what's going on there. All right, we'll extend this guy this way. And we'll sort of have these farms radiating out of the out of the city to some degree. All right, here we go. And I'm just going to build this is a cool thing in this game too. See, if I'm holding shift when I click down, um, and that allows me to to build zones of any size that I want. If I don't hold shift, it'll automatically put these streets in, but we don't actually need that many streets. So I'm going to build these kind of long skinny farms, and I'm going to leave a kind of a gap between them, uh, which you could, I think, interpret as, you know, if you look at, if you're in an airplane and you see farms, often you're going to see, uh, you're going to see like a, sort of a hedgerow between farms or something like that. So this is a pretty wide gap, to be honest, but, you know, I feel like this is a not a heavily populated area. i got to be a bit careful here because farms zone... Zoning farms can get expensive. So yeah, let's just start by having these farms radiate out from the city. And I'm going to try and do this a bit quicker so that we can maybe get get this rolling in one video. And, uh, and yeah. So we'll start with an agricultural city. And then we will, we will move towards other kinds of employment as we go along. Uh, am I running out of... yeah, I'm going to start running out of money if I go any farther out than that. So let's just... I'm just going to kind of try and use this road as the primary. There we go. Like that, and then like that. Okay, so we've got we've got two, two roads. Let's just clear this little dot here. We've got two roads kind of radiating out of the city. Uh, I could also build farms along this diagonal. One of the disadvantages of this game, in fact, probably its biggest disadvantage, is that it's not on a hex grid and it's not like a vector-based game. Uh, so you are you you are limited to these these four-sided tiles, uh, and that's that is probably the single biggest limitation. And so usually, it's usually you kind of want to avoid doing a lot of this diagonal stuff unless you've got certain mods that that allow you to to build a little bit differently. Uh, you, you pretty much want to avoid doing this kind of thing. I'm just using this because it's the most efficient way to do this road here. But uh, anyway, we'll explore that later. Uh, there's all sorts of, there's kind of an issue with uh, with building, uh, let's just do this. This is kind of a neat feature, uh, building styles. Uh, I don't use a lot of modded buildings for my residential stuff. So I use I just use the kind of vanilla ones, but there's you know if you're not using modded buildings, you can kind of use this. And so I could kind of actually do this, and we could have only these older buildings built at first, and then as the city gets more modern, we could move on to more modern buildings. So I'm gonna do that just for fun. Right? Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Just wanna look at my budget here. Uh, I don't think I'm really missing anything. What I'm gonna do though is turn down. This thing generates way more power than we need for this small farming village, so I'm just going to turn that one down, and hopefully we won't actually need a lot of power. And maybe I will, as a source of income, one of the things I can do... No, I can't do anything. Alright, 
let's let's go. Let's press play. Uh, let's go to speed two. I normally play at speed three, but uh, we may, in fact, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to cheetah speed, as uh, as it is traditionally called. We can see we're getting a few houses here, and our farms are starting to develop. This is our demand. So here you can see there's uh, there we go. It's as the residential zone is filling out, we're getting more demand for agriculture. Uh, we got to keep an eye on our budget, so we're still we're still in the red. Uh, but we're almost, as things build, they're paying taxes and we're starting to get some income. So we're just going to kind of go back and forth between this, this, uh, this button here. I'm hitting the residential, commercial, industrial, the, the demand for the different zones. And we're just going to kind of go back and forth between that and the budget to make sure, yeah, we're, we're making money now, so that's good. Oh yeah, so you can see here this has actually gotten very messy because I zones, you don't need to have these zones, these um, power lines when you have zones because it's it sort of builds these undergrounds, underground lines. So yeah, uh, that seems to be working pretty well. I'm noticing a few zones that aren't developing here. This is, the agriculture zone in this is kind of buggy. We're not going to be building a lot of farms because agriculture doesn't work super well in this game. Uh, it's kind of eye candy, but I just wanted to put some in early to uh, to to get it going, to kind of get a city going and to get the feel of a city that goes from being an agricultural city to a commercial or industrial city. But uh, it's a bit it's a bit buggy, and I'll talk more about that later. There there are some mods that fix that. Uh, I don't use them for a number of reasons, but I'll, I'll get into more of that. I don't want I don't want to start a huge diatribe about mods right away. I kind of want to get get some more city built. Uh, so actually, that's one thing you can do if you find your zones aren't developing is disconnect them from your road network very briefly. Let a few days pass and then reconnect them, and that kind of that seems to refresh. It seems to refresh the uh, the demand and the pathfinding. Uh, robots in the game. So let's take a look here. We haven't, all of our residential hasn't built yet, although it looks like it's going to. Oh no, no, we are out of, so you see we've, we've zoned a little bit more residential zones than, than uh, we have jobs for. So let's build a few more farms because I've got some money. I am making, I'm making money there. The other thing too that you want to keep an eye on is you can see our capacity here, actual capacity, power used. So you want to make sure, like, if, if you've got your power funded all the way here and you don't have a lot of money in the bank, you don't want to be, you don't want to be developing a lot of stuff because if it builds too quickly and you don't have enough money to, and you're maybe running in the red or something and you don't have enough money to build a power plant, if you run out of power, you can get into real big problems. So that's something to keep in mind. But let's just, let's just, uh, I think we've got enough money to just kind of fill out this this area here. Uh, we don't want to be building farms too close to any source of pollution, obviously. So that's that's pretty much as close as you would ever want to get. Uh, here, yeah, we finished this one up nicely. So let's see if that develops. It should. And if it doesn't, I'll do that. That silly little trick again. Yeah, so let's let's try that again. I think maybe that'll work because we've got the demand, so it should build. There we go. That's looking nice. So you see, because I left some gaps, I think it makes the landscape look, look nicer. I've kind of got these different sized farms with the tree gaps between them. So, so yeah, so I think, uh, you know, you can kind of play around with the size of the zones and how it looks. Now, this, this residential city is kind of squalid, obviously. So we're gonna want to think about different kinds of zones. Uh, we could also, we could also uh, do a little bit more, we could do some more farming first, maybe. Um, yeah, we could do some more farming for sure. Maybe, maybe we can. 
do one road here, and then we'll actually get rid of this kind of diagonal mess. Uh, and yeah, I'll get rid of that because that's going to cause us problems. Oops, I think I just deleted some farm. That's okay. Uh, that's the other thing too is that you know you you uh, when you play this game, uh, if you if you kind of make a mess. Uh, you, I think it's nice to kind of work around your mess, you know, you're gonna, that's how, if you look at especially like European cities, but even older North American cities like say Boston uh, or Montreal, where I live, uh, you'll notice that the older parts of the cities have these kind of random street, uh, street grids and they are the results of these sort of happy accidents. So. Let's just go with that. All right. Build some long, skinny farms. Can we, we can squeeze another guy in there, maybe? Uh, yep. All right. I'll deal with that messy power line afterwards. Do I have? Yeah, see, now I'm really actually pushing it for money. So let's just do this. I think we can afford it, though. You know what? I think we can sort of sort of afford to play a little loose with cash. We This is the bare minimum I would ever want to have in reserve, to be honest. Uh, is that going to... That's certainly going to fill out our residential area. Maybe I can try and force this to develop again. And that's kind of filled out this area. Uh, well, almost, right? There we go. That's kind of filled out this uh, this whole little quad this this whole little corner of the map. I wouldn't want to build anything in that corner because it's got these heavy polluters. But uh, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you developing? There we go. Great. So we filled up that whole area. Uh, we've pr almost filled up our residential stuff here. And I think I'm going to leave it off at that for this first episode. Uh, and the next episode, we will kind of move this, transform this city from a, a sort of agri primarily subsistence, maybe subsistence agriculture type city to a city that has different kinds of employment. Uh, before we go, though, let's take a look at one quick stat, which is jobs and population. This is, I think this is accurate. I think this... Uh, Sometimes these numbers get a bit weird, especially when you have mods, but but there's all sorts of like really cool data views here. So let's just take a quick look at our data views before before we go. Uh, so we can see here that if I take these two off, like that's all we have, right? Oh, wait a second here. Yeah, so yeah, 20, 20 residents of this. This is um, these these are simoleons, the currency in the game, just like The Sims. And uh, and so you can see that this is these are the poor poor Sims, medium medium wealth and rich. And the same applies. This is commercial service, commercial office, agriculture, dirty industry, medium industry, and high tech. So we can see that we basically only have poor poor Sims and agriculture. Uh, and there's all sorts of reasons for that, and I'll get into it uh, in future episodes, but. That's that's mainly it. We can also see that we could probably our population could probably support some more jobs. We have just under 2,000 people in this village, and we could probably give them more farms. But we've kind of run out of space unless we want to, you know, fund a pretty expensive bridge, which we could probably afford to do if we if we kind of let the clock tick for a while. We could maybe build a bridge and just keep going with farms. Uh, so we could consider doing that next episode, or we could kind of diversify the economy. So we'll decide that next episode. Uh, let's take a look at a couple other, what else can we look at here? Education. So, I mean, it shows up on the map as red, obviously, the data view. And then if we go to the graph here, where is it? Education. Yeah, we can see that the education is really, really, this is sort of an IQ. I don't 
I don't know what this is actually, it's an abstract of number, but you can see that we don't have any education and that's partly why, that's partly why the, all we have demand for is agriculture and dirty industry and kind of these cheap commercial jobs here. Uh, so next episode we'll focus on maybe diversifying the economy a bit and uh, yeah, making, uh, get, bringing some prosperity to Plantation Bay. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, like it and subscribe. And I'll see you soon with another episode. Ciao.